listening to Inclusive AF with Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? I'm good. I uh, It's Friday and it's clear and sunny out. So, you know, it's like a miracle day over here. I don't know what to even think. Well, it's raining and Donald Trump is coming tomorrow. So, I mean, take that information and do with it what you will. <laughs> You're in opposite <laughs> land. <laughs> um okay this is the world famous regional airport in waco because and welcome to the inclusive af podcast ay, ay, ay. yes uh yes indeed so um we are revving up for work human uh jackie i know you're excited we get to go to san diego for a few days and see some amazing speakers and we happen to have one of those amazing speakers joining us today. So uh, Eric Bailey is here. And Eric, I will go ahead and, and uh, turn it over to you to do a little intro, and then we'll jump right in. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Um, um, I am a unique kind of speaker. I spent my a bulk of my career listening to terrible speakers and uh, systematically decided what I was going to do differently. Um, uh, and so... I'm I'm born into the idea that trying to change someone's behavior is usually a futile experience unless you understand what is motivating them to exhibit that behavior. Uh, so so I I dove deep into the world of brain science, which is psychology, neuroscience, linguistics, anthropology, etc., and try to understand people in in a more complete way. And what I realized is that when I did that. I stopped being as frustrated with people uh, when people exhibit behaviors that I don't understand. It's not like, oh, there's something wrong with them. It's like, oh, that makes sense. And and from and from that point on, it's like, oh, there, there's actually something here I can teach the world. And and that's that's what I get to do. Awesome. Very I cool. love that. Um, and you're another uh, Arizonian. Is that what we are? We're Arizonian. We're Arizonan, I think. I think it's Arizonans. Arizona. Uh, yes. Arizona. You're, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we live in Arizona. Uh, the, the yeah, desert rat also works. Yes, 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 absolutely. We are. Sometimes it's a desert. It hasn't been a desert recently. We're now like in a swamp or something. I don't know yeah. what's happening. Um, so Eric, you are going to be speaking at work human and, um, what, uh, first off, I want to ask what drew you to work human? What got you inspired to join kind of the, 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 the crew of work human? Yeah. So interestingly, um, uh, a buddy of mine, Brooke Hamilton, um, she she works with me on occasion and it must have been like five years ago. She said, I'm going to this HR conference. I'm so excited for it. There's like 5000 people. It's the most amazing experience. And I'm like, how have I never heard of this? I, I call myself a recovering HR guy. Like I, I served my time in HR uh, and like, how have I never heard of this conference? And so I looked it up and coincidentally, there was a call for speakers. Uh, and so I'm like, oh, I'll put in for that. Sure. And I, I got a spot. This is this is back in 2018. Um, and, and, I, and I spoke there. It was in Nashville. It was a wonderful experience. Oh, no, maybe 2019. Um, and, and I loved it. Met some amazing people. Um, and it was just, it was just, just amazing. I remember talking with, with the, the speaker coordinator and she said, uh, you know, getting, getting on stage at work human is harder than getting into Harvard. So that's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so I was, I was super excited about it, uh, and had a great experience. And coincidentally, my book was launching at the exact same time that I was speaking at work human. So that was a really cool experience for, for me as well. Um, but, uh, I did that. I was asked to come back the following year, which was, of course, 2020. Uh, it was scheduled to be in Austin. I was so excited for it. And then, you know, the whole world decided to turn upside down. Um, and then uh, came back, spoke last year, uh, and then I'll be speaking again this year. So I think I think I'm, I'm like a I'm like a um, like a bad fruitcake. Once you once you got me, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> Well, I, I I don't know that they would feel the same way because I know I like I have seen you speak. I saw you speak last year at Work Human. I've seen you speak outside of that, and uh, I, I think anyone that's able to attend your session while we are in San Diego 
highly, highly encourage you to to do that because I think as you drop some truth bombs across all of your talks, which I love. So uh, you mentioned your book. Tell us a little bit about your book. Yeah, so it's um, a, a book for our times. It's called The Cure for Stupidity, uh, Using Brain Science to Explain Irrational Behavior. And uh, I wrote the book because I saw so many times in my personal life, in my professional life, how we misunderstand each other. We, we And when we misunderstand each other, our first reaction is to judge each other, uh, judge each other's character. So I'll judge you as unintelligent. I'll judge you as a bad person. I'll judge you as this or that or this or that, just because we see the world differently. And and, and all of that is, is predictable based in brain science. If you understand brain science, you can say, oh, that is why they do this. And so I wrote up um, over the course of my career, 22 principles, what I call the principles of human understanding. And as I would, you know, do a workshop or do a session, I would, you know, give maybe three or four of the principles and people are like, I want all 22. Uh, and <laughs> like, well, that would take us like three weeks. So we don't have time for it. Um, but I started to, to develop this book. I'm like, oh, I can do all 22 of the principles if if i write this book and so that's that's what was the genesis of the book um and then coincidentally as i wrote the book the entire world fell apart i mean um i mean people are at each other's throats uh people are you know writing off neighbors that they've known for 30 years just because they put the wrong political sign in the front yard uh we see family members splitting up we see you know people arguing at work and um, don't get me started on the government, right? Uh, we are we're more fractured and divided than we ever have been. And this this book is really a a, a pathway to healing um, all of that. And that's that's what I want to do for the world. I feel like that just ties me into the type of work that Katie and I do a lot when we're talking in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And I will never forget like understanding things is different or what different cultures may have given up within the United States. And mm -hmm. if this is the only thing you think you have, you know, how would you feel? Like it's one thing to, to, to think, Oh, I'm smarter, but it's another thing to think like, this is equity. It's the only equity that I have that you're trying to take away from me. So imagine you're down to your last dollar and you're fighting me for it. Mm -hmm. Would you just give it up? Because I said, you know, I don't have a dollar. <laughs> like oh i'll give you 50 no you wouldn't you wouldn't right yeah. Um, yeah, and the the idea that there is infinitely more experience and context around a person than we can ever comprehend we cannot comprehend all that somebody else has gone through that's influencing their behavior right now that's right and and and, and when we when we open that up to the possibility that someone is acting exactly rationally based on the environment they see themselves in it it changed it changed the way we can interact with them. You are so right. I know people know my mom passed away like three weeks ago, oh, and someone God. said, "I know you're busy, but if you could just call me back." And I was like, "You have no idea. No, nope. you don't know. Mm -mm. <laughs> no idea. You just think I'm rude, and that's fine. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> not responding. I'm not responding. But you're right. Uh, you know, there's so many pieces, and I love that. You know, I'm reading the um, the myth of normal, which is the same, like yes. Where, yes. process where it's like we think this is the way it's supposed to be. We only view it through our own eyes, and we think that's the way that it's supposed to be. To the point where you, there are times where you even view yourself as not normal, even though this feels perfectly normal behavior mm -hmm. to you. Well, and that's and the, the weird thing about that is, you know, there's a whole push on the idea of getting rid of normal and average uh, from education because it's leading students to have lower self-esteem and lower confidence, which leads to to poor performance. But because we've we use data and statistics, we say, oh, here's what the average person would do. Well, no one is exactly that. There is no one person that is exactly average, which means that everyone else is comparing themselves against some unachievable perfect. And 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 that's that is not the best way to motivate folks, right? It's, it, it could be wonderful for understanding, you know, large groups of society, macroeconomics, etc. But if the average student is getting this, then I uh, clearly I'm not I'm not normal. 
And and when you spend life not being normal, we, we all understand not being normal, not or being an other, that puts a completely different psychological pressure on us. And and there's a there's a lot of work that we can do in our society to really help folks really you know feel included, feel that they belong in in the world that that we are collectively creating. That's funny. I think the my kids, it's the opposite. Like I think my son got his first ninety eight <laughs> ever, and he's like, basically, I'm brilliant. Like I think he's going to quit college. <laughs> I think he's like, I'm too smart for anyone here. I don't know how we did that, but our kids are exactly the opposite. We're like, oh, sorry, you lost the game. They're like, wait, did you see me? Did you see me though? So, you know, maybe they'll have a party your second book. They can. <laughs> no, no, there's a, a uh, um, uh, one of my, my dear friends, Simon Bailey, no relation. We call each other cousin, but um, uh, he, he has a bunch of research that children uh, um, are operating at the genius level until they're about four or five years old and then it starts to taper off because the world beats it out of them and and you i mean you think about like uh you know a kid in a grocery store you see them they're gonna be staring at you and like wow like trying to look take in all of your amazingness but as adults we're like i'm not i'm not making eye contact with another person right because we we lose we lose that that uh that complete authentic wholehearted living because the the world's kind of beaten it out of us, and it's like, oh, what will the world look like, right? If we could see the world through through children's eyes, like, did, yeah, I know we fail, but did you see me? Like, I was great. <laughs> That's right. Right. Think about that. Well, and I think that also kind of just the it, it drills into the curiosity piece that so many of us lose. And that is, you know, part of that beating down, which is, you know, it, it makes sense that the smartness level or whatever you want to call it does kind of decline because you just, you lose that curiosity, but nice. you're also making me think about like HR reviews when you get that meets expectations and you're like, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what does that actually do for you? Not one thing. Right. 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 <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. inspired. Let me keep being average for you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, and then and then what happens is that we get these wonderful leaders that want to motivate people. So it's like instead of the three meets expectations, now it's like okay, now I'm going to give you a four now, and now ev and now everyone is exceeding expectations. And it's like, well, now everyone's there. Now that's new normal. And it's like, well, now j just a four. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, well, now I'm going to give you a five. And now everyone's getting five. It's like this whole, this whole thing, because we're con constantly comparing ourselves against everybody else. It's like, ah, oh. yes. <laughs> oh, never ending cycle of fun. Uh, it's okay. good times. So uh, who are you most looking forward to seeing in San Diego at work human? Oh, so, so uh, Cy, uh, Cy Wakeman, uh, yeah. we have been Doing this for the last probably six years, uh, I remember right after I launched my book uh, on Amazon, you know, it says other other people bought this book. And so it was always my book next to her book. Um, and it was it was wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, we've spoken at Work Human at the same time. We spoke at Inbound, which is a, con a, a conference, sales conference in, in Boston. We've spoken in Maine. We've spoken in Georgia. Literally, we've spoken at the same conference probably... 15 times and never met we've never met uh and and so last time Wait, seriously we, seriously we've never met i mean uh, i met yeah I'm like, I'm I'm there. There. <laughs> eric we need to talk as soon as we get yes. to san diego on the 17th we're gonna go talk to Cy. okay yeah, we'll hook that up <laughs> i mean it's, it's so funny like at, in in uh, uh in atlanta last time we were like this close to meeting, but something happened in her room. And so she, she had to leave really quickly. And so I were supposed to meet and like, she left right before I got there. Oh, uh, so I'm looking forward to meeting Sai. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we did. Uh, we were, Jackie and I were kind of looking at the agenda yesterday and, and picking who we want. And I, I, one of the things, and I don't know if you all feel the same way, but I love that it is the tracks that they have and that you can kind of follow a specific track. But then there's also the 
cool, but I also want to go to that person and that person. And, uh, you know, and like you said, kind of at the same time, oh, these two people are talking. I want to see both of them. How do we make that happen? So, uh, yeah, it's it's fun. But um, when are you actually speaking? What day are you speaking? So I actually have two sessions. So I'm okay. I'm doing a... Uh, so last year I did uh, my session called Holy Shift. <laughs> Make sure you enunciate. Uh, uh, completely changing the conversation on diversity, equity, inclusion, and privilege. Um, and it was just the engagement was so high in the session. We just we didn't have enough time to to really explore everything that everyone wanted to. And so Work Human actually asked me this year if I would do an expanded workshop, kind of as a a part two to that. Um, so I'll be doing that one on Wednesday, and then I have a regular session on Tuesday, and that one is um, uh, how and when did that become normal? Um, kind of exploring the, the brain science of social norms, uh, and and it's it's that's a fun session because I mean we go into things like why do you walk into an elevator and immediately turn around and face the door? Right. And, and, and so uh, we'll, we'll have some fun with that. But uh, I, I, I do I've done that before. And you hear people after my session, they'll actually intentionally go and stand backwards in an elevator and just see what other people do. Uh, it's 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 so fun. It's so fascinating. But like there's these social, social norms that we've created. And then we just kind of all agree that this is what we're supposed to do. And and sometimes like why is that a normal like think about Okay, when you close your eyes and imagine a birthday party hat, right? Why is it a triangle? Why is it a, why is it a cone? Why, why is everyone? I've imagine- been wondering. Wait, but like, why do we even sing Happy Birthday? Why do we? No one birthday? likes singing Happy Birthday, and no one likes being sung Happy Birthday too. And and if you understand music, the song is a really sad. Like the it's the the chords are depressing. It's like Happy Birthday. <laughs> to you <laughs> right it's a very depressing song uh but we sing it like happy like okay but yeah there's these norms that we just we just all get on board with and the same thing's happening at work right and so anyway really fun sessions so that'll be on tuesday and then the the deep dive uh to to the brain science of diversity equity inclusion uh, which you do not need to have seen the first part to really dive into it uh that'll be on wednesday i love that and i i do love that you talk about the social norms and then i i think i'll be excited to see that because i'm i live in texas and there are texan norms that don't make any sense other anywhere in the world um and i and i i would if i had extra time i would study people in line because of the same you know the fairness and how the tension starts building and how people get really angry like you're not supposed to do that and you're like i'm just trying to throw away this bottle and they're like pretending in front of me i think i need to read your book before i go to disneyland the next time. <laughs> i'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah yeah i love that i love it and even the, the one thing that i notice is that if someone leaves too much space in line how everyone behind them gets really upset and it's like hold That's on right. we're still in line <laughs> If I'm not going anywhere, forward. <laughs> <laughs> listen, this lady tried to take these two people out. The people were trying to pick up their prescriptions and they had carts in the line. And the woman, I don't know, needed shampoo really bad. There was about to be a full riot in the grocery <laughs> store last week. Fascinating. Can you, Eric, can you study the, the phenomenon of anyone being in the, uh, boarding gate that is on like the last boarding group that stands at the very front of the gate can you explain that one to me please can you write put that in your next book that'll be that'll be in the next book it's it's so funny watching human behavior is so fascinating to me like and i love that people will will stand they'll stand right there and then people will just kind of cue in behind them and then they don't move, but people are on their phones. And so they don't realize that the line's not moving, that they're waiting behind. It's like um, uh, if a car breaks down and they have their flashers on in the turn lane and they get a huge line of cars behind them because people just look and they see a turn signal. They don't see <laughs> that the car is broken down. They, they don't. Anyway, so it's people people have uh, fascinating behaviors. And I love I love watching that because it unlocks so much about all other aspects of life is like 
you know, how we interact at work, how we interact at home, how we interact on Facebook, how we interact right in, in, in random, random in the grocery store. And human behavior is fascinating. And, and the more we try to understand it, the more we realize we don't understand anything. Absolutely. I, I think the other one, and I, and I just had this happen yesterday because I was at that baseball game I mentioned, uh, we uh, were standing in line and the one that I always love, and I, I know I do it myself, so this is not a judgment, but like when you're with someone and they get like super fired up about it and you're like, really? Like, especially travel, <laughs> like travel, I'm like, you know, hey, nothing is going to go right. And you just have to kind of accept that and be like, cool. Uh, oh, we're sitting here for another hour. All right. Awesome. Doing Great. This then, let's, yeah. let's get my candle out, you know, or whatever. Um, but the 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 response of getting fired up or getting angry, like that is the other one that cracks me up because it is the, it's okay. Calm down. <laughs> Like, right. We're all here right. together. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's interesting because a lot of times there's there's like two or three other things that's kind of feeding that emotion. And especially when we start talking about diversity, equity, inclusion, um, you know, there there are certain words and phrases that that cause that fire up. And and that's that's where I spend as much time as possible. I want, you know, come to me. I, I was I was talking with a gentleman uh a couple of years ago and I was talking about systemic racism. And and he said, systemic racism is a figment of your imagination. And he was so mad, so mad. And, you know, because his emotion sparked my emotion and I wanted to get all upset and and and, and prove how dumb he was. And 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 I said, hold on. All right, let me just take a breath. There might be something going on in his world that I can't comprehend. What if I got curious? And so instead of instead of proving to him how wrong he was, which is my natural reaction, I said, what do you hear? What what are you hearing when I say the phrase systemic racism? And he's like, oh, glad you asked. And he was still really angry. And he said, uh, you know, I hear that everything in the United States is racist and, and it's all racist in its founding and its institutions and that. People of color cannot be successful. And da, 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 da. I'm like, whoa, that makes sense. If if that were my definition, I would probably say it's a figment of your imagination as well. So thank you so much for sharing. And he's like, I was really expecting you to fight me on that. So I don't exactly know what to do right now. <laughs> but it's like, we realized we were, we were using the same words, but talking about different things. Mm -hmm. And that only was able to come out because he expressed his, strong emotions and I didn't match it. And and that that opened up this really powerful dialogue and even still to this day we still talk quite a bit. Uh, and, and and he'll say hey Eric, you know as a young black man, how do you feel about this news? And I'm like this, this is how I feel about it. And he has access to an experience he can't otherwise have. And I'll say, you know, I'm not going to say his name, but hey, as an old white dude, how do you feel about this? And he'll he'll explain it and and he'll give me insight to something I can't know, I can't experience. And and that's that's the power of of really doing this work in understanding human behavior because there is so much out there for us to know that we can't know otherwise. I I love that you said that. That was literally like the first two conversations me and Katie had, we met at Work Human. And one day I said, Katie, I need to ask you a question. And she said, okay. And I said, why do wh white women? And she said, stop. <laughs> do you want me to speak on behalf of all white women? And I said, yes. And I will continue with the question. So then like flash forward a week later, she was like, okay, so why do black people? And I was like, oh, all black people she's like yes so then we were having these conversations like we knew we were teasing in that right 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 but what you bring up is something that i've had to explain um to people of color when they start working at, at my company so i'm the vp of talent acquisition and, and diversity equity and inclusion but I'm belonging for textio and we had a new exec and katie is actually um, facilitating um, the racial healing handbook for the executives at Textio. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to tell her that it was a meeting. And I was like, oh, we'll come to the class. Um, her family's from the Philippines and have a, a farm in the Philippines. She lives in Brooklyn. It's her first, we're on the fourth chapter. It's her first time 
to meet with everybody. And there's a white woman talking about her own like internal racism that she was raised with. And she, her eyes were like this big, like she felt like I'm in the wrong room. So I like, okay, this is going to feel really weird. And I have to explain it to a lot of people once they join the organization of, okay, you're going to be very tense. There's meetings where you're used to being you know, othered or told to be quiet or belittled. And when it doesn't happen, it's that same response that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. There's all this like penned up adrenaline because you're paying ready for a fight. Yeah. And then when it doesn't happen, you can't even listen because you ha that has to stop Yeah. before you can move on. And so I, I really relate to what you were saying about the person that came in just like really upset. And then when you were like, I ain't even mad at you. And he's like, uh, <laughs> okay, I need a minute. Cause like all of this adrenaline is still there, but I don't want to fight you now. So I have to kind of calm it down. Yeah. You know, I think about that also in driving with people like, so, um, when I had my, my son, he's, he's 20 now, but when I had him, I was, when I got to the hospital, we found out I was 10 centimeters dilated and fully effaced. But while we were driving, I was like moaning. My husband had to cut off. He kept going into the left turn lane and then going straight through the line. And people would catch up and start yelling at us. And I have never been upset at a driver ever, <laughs> ever since. Because right. I'm like. You don't know. We don't know. No idea. You're going through. Yep. Yep. You, you didn't know that, that poor, poor Todd was getting screamed at. <laughs> listen, and no, I kept saying, no. listen, I'll tell him, I'll tell him at the next window, because I was pregnant up to here, and I'd roll down the window, and I'd go, it's like, happening. I couldn't, not one word. I'm like, <laughs> they're like, contraction, contraction. And I'm like, it was, <laughs> I, we should have filmed it. It would have been a really, you know. I don't know. It would have been a bad, bad show. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, Eric, we are very excited to uh, see you speak and the workshop. Uh, I'll be there for sure. I'm actually, so there's, I know Jackie that you want to go to a, another one that's happening, uh, but it, I just looked to double check the uh, black man in tech. Uh, I know you want to go to that session. And so uh, don't worry, it's not the same time. Uh, so Eric, we'll be in the front row if you need us, you know, if you need us to tag in, just let us know. Um, <laughs> and, and we'll go from there. Um, last words on why someone should go to work human. Oh my gosh. So as I mentioned before, recovering HR guy, I've sat through so many terrible, 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 terrible presentations. Uh, over the course of my career and work human has this wonderful ability to cultivate the best uh not maybe not necessarily like the best like quote unquote speakers but the best content the best energy the best delivery and you walk out of every session that you go to like that was awesome uh, you know, at any other HR conference, any one of the speakers, any one of the sessions would have been the best session at a conference. And so, uh, and, and the energy and the camaraderie is, is, is second to none. I, you know, going down to work human central and just hanging out with all these folks that are really here based on their own curiosity that they want to grow, they want to develop, they want to connect. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful environment. So I'm, I'm really glad that it's, it's ramping back up again after the pandemic, uh, the, the numbers are going up. It's, I, I, I'm really looking forward to, I'll be there the whole week, uh, ha having a bunch of, a bunch of fun and I'll, I'll be in the front row for the general sessions, you know, you know, me, Katie, uh, I'll be there. Uh, but it's, it's going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Jackie, what are you most looking forward to and why should someone attend? The food. Now, listen, no, I know that sounds out of control. <laughs> Nobody, we were literally listening to a jazz band and I don't even remember. Yeah. It was like, there wasn't that many people there because we had just had like ice cream and pretzels. And then before that had like taco bars, like there's more food and it's like the best food and it's all day Yeah, and it's snacks and treats and breakfast. Like, so if, even if you just really like food, you're getting more than your value's worth at any ticket price. I promise, or I will give you your money back. <laughs> that is not where I expected you to go, but I, I, I know you a heart right. of surprises, right. full of surprises today. <laughs> so I, for me, I think it's a, kind of a little bit of what Eric, you're saying, the content and just that 
network and and it's not like it's not networking it truly is like coming together as a group of individuals and learning from each other having really good conversations um and and i also love and i know i talk about this all the time the way that they localize what they're doing as well so you know we'll be in san diego and normally when they have their recognition bar there's you know very localized charities that they're giving to they have vendors that are there that are from the you know from san diego obviously last year you know it was atlanta and we got to see some really cool stuff from local artists local artisans um and so i think that's part of it as well but i I agree with you wholeheartedly every single session that you attend you come out and you're like that was the best session and then you go to the next one you're like that was the best session and it's like all day long you just learn and grow throughout the day and it's awesome so um that's the part that I also love. So uh, we will see you, Eric, uh, in it's like three it's weeks. A couple now, weeks. Right? Yeah. yeah. I know. It, so it, soon. It, yeah. It's going quickly this year already, but uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Uh, looking forward to hearing your talk. And um, thank you so much for joining us on, on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, this is Katie Van Horn. And this is Jackie Clayton. Bye. Bye-bye.